Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad to be here. You know, it's funny. I um, I thought I just saw you for the first time on IG, but then when I put Kurt the connector together and I kept thinking, where do I see this name before? Where did I see this name? And then I was like, oh yeah, the um, what's our, our group with Nikki? Oh, Deeper Than a Brand? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's where, because yeah. uh, it's been up since I think 2020, it was like brand prep 2020 and then kind of evolved from there. Right. And I see you usually the one that puts out the, the messages and encourages everybody to like, Hey guys, let's, this is the work we got to do this week. Yeah. 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 Work execution is worship. Yeah. So how are you yeah. today, sir? Oh man. Like I said, great on purpose, man. Great on purpose. And like every morning you wake up with a choice and a chance, mm -hmm. you uh you have an opportunity. So I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Who, who do you say you are? Oh, man, I like to say I'm just a humble servant, man. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, the demographics uh, and all that are minimal to the experience and purpose of why I do what I do, you know, um, Southern guy, love sports, learned a lot through sports um, and sports and organize, organized team and learning about the power and purpose of team uh, developed me to be a connector, you know. So uh, from there, man, transition came up and just really uh, learned that serving and and having a purpose and being able to connect people is powerful, you know, and that's the whole reason that I'm here. So I could tell you a lot of credentials and all that, but at the end of the day, really who I am is a servant at heart, looking to give people uh, a little inspiration, combine it with some motivation, uh, ultimately give them a little more information to help them uh, with application. And so application, clarity, mindset, um, and just the ability to know that you're capable of doing anything that you're willing to work for and do it consistently with a purpose you can achieve. So that's who I am, man. I'm a go-giver. I like to tell people that I'm not a go-getter. You know, everybody <laughs> says, oh, I'm a go-getter. No, nah, I'm a go-giver. You know, I'm on, I'm on a, I challenge people. I yeah. say you give once because I am competitive. Mm -hmm. People don't know that I am competitive, you know, but I like to say I'm competitive in a way that pushes us forward. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you give once, I'm gonna give five times. So we're going to be in this constant loop of giving, not to, not to diminish each mm -hmm. other, but to uplift each other so you know i'm gonna go give i'm gonna give five times more uh and and know that if i'm giving at a high level then what i get back will be more than enough right that's awesome and what's funny is i just put two and two together with your logo in the back it's like hey how else would you be the connector if you're not the plug hey, hey you know, <laughs> how'd you come hey, up you with pick, that you picked up the secret um <laughs> Really, man, it was in the transition of figuring out, I think, what everybody goes through, figuring out who you are, you know, and and really um, reflecting, you know, when I reflected, you know, being from the South, uh, you know, that term, the plug, you know, oh, he's a plug, meaning, you know, you got someone on the inside or you have someone that can hook you up. Uh, you got someone that can can help you out, you know, um, the plug also means that you you know, you got to connect, you know, you got a connection to something. So um, I came up with the plug because as I was learning and about me, I started with that, you know, it's like, oh, I'm the, I used to say, I'm the, I got a guy, you know, you, we all had a group of friends and there, there's one friend that's like, yo, every time we ask, you got a guy, you know, or you got a person. It's like, hey man, I need a TV you know, oh man, I got somebody for you. Uh, like I need to go get my car fixed. I got somebody for you. You know, it's like, yo, you know, everyone. So it was like, yo, you the plug, man. And, yeah. you know, um, taking that to literal, you know, a plug needs a source. And so I like to think that I help plug people into the source and help people with what they need 
you know, when a lot of people out here, I'm going to tell you what I think, and I'm going to tell you what works for me and then tell you that for you, but that may not work for you. But ultimately, if I help you plug into the source, then you will get the power that you need. So, you know, that's, right. that's why you see the plug. Can you say that? So the last thing you said, just one more time, because I, I feel like I almost missed it. I was like, I feel like I've either done that before or someone's done that to me. Oh, where people, I'm going to tell you what works for me mm -hmm. and then tell that to you because it worked for me. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, this is what worked for me. Well, that's great. Right. Um, that's theory. Mm -hmm. But the application of it is different. So how about we figure out what works for you and then plug you into the source to get the way that it's supposed to work for you? Because mm -hmm. what worked for me and how I do everything um, may not work for you. Right. You have different things in your life. You had a different place. But if I give you the framework mm -hmm. of, hey, this was my best practice. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the best practices that I've learned. Now, let me give that to you. You apply it in your life. Keep what, you know, keep what works, filter out what doesn't. Yeah. That makes sense. And the, I, I like that. How, I know you said it, it took you a minute to kind of get in that that mindset how right how long did it kind of take you to develop that because it's like a lot of times as myself wanting to be somebody that's like someone you can count on or at least knowing somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody it's you always want to have like the right answer so did you ever have a hard time not always trying to say like hey do it exactly like this because this yes. worked for me like yes. for instance i think we're both in BU or like knowing Nikki kind of having that group of growth mindset where you get around a group of people, you get around a mentality that works, and then you might take it back to somebody that may not be exposed to it or have those same experiences. Like what's been, what, what's it been like for you to kind of see the challenge of like, okay, I've got some good news and I want to give it to you, but you don't like, you don't want to be the evangelist per se that just comes in like just like hey guys here's here's the great news and then they're right. like okay yeah that's nice right. too uh really it's about internal reflection you know even saying you know i had to understand that there you know people were like oh you know it's it, very linear you know very in a box when it's saying what's the right answer well i i don't know if there's a right answer let me tell you the best answer that I've received and the best answer for right now, you know, and then from there, figure out what's the best answer for you. You know, it's like good and bad. No, what's right and what's right, you know, at the moment, uh, because it, it can be difficult. I, I, you know, being yes, it is, but it's constant remembering that, um, we don't know, I don't know where you are and we're doing the best that we can to figure out where you are. And what I tell you today or what is said today may not resonate until a couple weeks, a month, a day from now. But that doesn't mean not to say it. It just means also um, when I'm saying it, am I saying it to make me look good or am I saying it to help you? because those are two different things. If I'm saying it for status, then it's less that I'm worried about, are you receiving it? And more about making sure that I'm glorified. But if I flip it and say, hey, I want to give this to you. I want to share this with you. You know, let's think of food. Hey, I think this is a great burger. I think this burger is amazing. It is the greatest thing ever. I love everything about it. Well, as we know, burgers are made, if they're homemade, they're made differently, right? If I give that to you, may I love lettuce, you don't. I love pickles, you don't. I like cheese, you may not. You may be lactose intolerant, cheese is not. But if I'm like, no, you gotta have this, and I'm just forced like thinking like, nope, this is the best thing for you, then I forget that let me give you the best that I have 
seen, what I know, and then how does it work for you? If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, great. Because again, I don't know where you are in life. And so uh, it has been hard because we get passionate. We get excited. We want to tell everybody else, but I've had to learn that everyone mindset may not be where you are right now, you know? And so that works for you because it works for you and your mindset is there, which again, doesn't mean that you don't help anybody. Doesn't mean you don't tell them. It's just, you know, hey, I'm ready to paint. You may just be learning the colors right now, but that doesn't mean you can't become a great painter. It's just that you have to paint in your own time, but let me give you the instruction. And when it's time for that fruit to bear, to come, or when it's time for that seed to come out the ground, it will. Now, what does it take for that? That's the key part. Watering, that's a principle consistent. No, you have to water it. You have to care for it. You have to nurture it. You have to get the weeds uh, you know, out, away from it. You have to be in the right environment. Those are principles. And when you set up principles, the beginning and end will take care of itself, execute mm -hmm. the principles in the middle. But again, going back and answer your question, it mm -hmm. is difficult sometimes because we do want, and I think it comes from, we want the best for people. And because we want the best for people, we're so excited. And we, we like, like, yo, it worked for me. I want right. to give it to you. And I just believe that it, you know, again, like you said, evangelist, <laughs> you know, I believe that this is the, well, I can believe it. Yeah. Let me tell you why it worked for me and what it's done for me. And right. when we look more at us, when we look, when I look more at me, I can help we, but I have to look at me and figure out what worked for me. Now, let me give you the principles yeah. of why it worked for me. And let me talk to you about that. And then my hopes is, I believe that this is a great environment. I think it's worked for me. I've seen transformations in my life. Mm -hmm. If you are ready to do that type of work, then come join us. Mm. I like that. Because yeah. so as you're talking, it, it got me to think since I brought up mentality, it's like having a and mentality. Like you can have this and that, like we can coexist versus or playing but, teams. It's like it's me or them versus it's yeah. like if, if you're on the good team or you're on, you're on the bad team. But it's like, no, if here's a principle that sets you up at ground level, like yeah. whatever you want to grow, you can grow pumpkins you can grow oranges you can grow apples just whatever you're gonna grow here's the basics of what you've got to do you've got to care for it you got to select it to begin with and then after you decide what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it you still have to maintain a focus of okay i'm gonna care for this you can't just start it and forget it and then just be like oh well, what happened i thought it's fall season time for the harvest but where's my pumpkins where's right, my apples right. it's like where's my strawberries it's like well maybe this isn't the season for that like certain things only come during this time other things come during that time but that that's amazing the yeah, season and, and environment yeah. i will say that too is the environment you you out here wanting to grow strawberries in uh an environment that's meant for oranges mm -hmm. they don't work the same or like you said I'm in an environment, pumpkins, plentiful. You're in an environment where, you know, apples could be plentiful, but you're so concerned about what he's growing or she's growing pumpkins and their pumpkins look good. I want pumpkins over here. It's not yeah. the right environment for pumpkins, you know? So, yeah, yeah. That's funny. I didn't, I didn't know that analogy was going to come through, but hey, sometimes <laughs> it works. <laughs> hey, sometimes it works. Pumpkins. Pumpkins and apples, right? Yeah. Pumpkins and apples. <laughs> Pumpkins and apples. Maybe that's yep. what we'll call this this uh, this episode. Hey, there it is, man. Pumpkins yeah. and apples. I like it. I like it. The mindset. The yeah. mindset. Pumpkins and apples. Man, but what? Tell me, what's twenty twenty one been like for you? I, I see you've been busy and in, in deeper than the brand. Yeah, plugging in, like giving to people, encouraging them to to take the challenge to execute what else has 2021 been like for you it's been a lot of growth you know been a tremendous amount of growth been a tremendous amount of uh applying 
all the things that I hoped would magically happen, but finally realized that hope is, is not a, a strategy. You know, hope is a principle and a thought work and execution is the strategy, you know? So that's what 2021 been. 2021 has been <clears throat> all the work in 2020 coming to fruition. You know, I like to say success is boring. You know, success is not what we define, however you define success. It's really boring if you think about it. You know, the results of success can be exciting, but being successful in your own way you define it is very boring. And why do I say it's boring? Because it's repeated actions over and over, you know, the same actions over and over without knowing when those actions will pay off, you know, and we can have the way we want it to pay off. Doesn't mean that's the way it will pay off, you know? And so, uh, 2020 was coming to, it, it was one phrase in 2020 that really stuck with me. It's like, if you come out of 2020, the same way you went in, then you've wasted time. And so in 2020, that just rung in my head over and over 2021 has been seeing some results of staying true and learning in 2020 you know so some of the places that i've been able to get to some of the people that i've been able to talk to and connect with being invited to this podcast you know that came from putting myself in uncomfortable moments learning experiences you know i i was reading a book recently that said leaders don't leaders avoid fail using the word failure they use learning experiences mm -hmm. so now i've absorbed that into my mindset and i'm really focused on saying learning experiences so what i may not have done well or what I look back in 2020 that didn't go where I wanted to. It was a learning experience. And those constant learning experiences, you know, smooth the stone, you know, smooth the razor, sharpen the razor. So 2021 has been seeing some of the consistency and the discipline and the obedience from 2020 pay off in 2021. But it's also been repeated lessons that you have to learn or you're doomed to repeat them over and over. But overall, man, I have a lot of gratitude for 2021, you know, making it through 2020, um, getting here, meeting great people, meeting people like yourself, uh, getting the ability to learn under, um, you know, Nikki and, and, and hearing Dr. Thomas Moore, CJ, Carl, you know, Jose Isaiah, and um, just being given the opportunity to even contribute came from 2020 and so I'm, I'm extremely grateful for 2021 you know celebrate the wins we in in the in the community we have a Friday celebrate your wins and so we can't forget about that either you know yeah. that every now and then sit back and say whoa I've made it here and that's amazing you know a, a little guy like myself that just believes in giving has had the opportunity to meet some heavy hitters you know and so 2021 has been great, but I'm even more excited about what's coming in 2020, 2022. Yeah. If every day I get a chance to wake up, then I get a chance and an opportunity to get better because sleep is the most dangerous time. <laughs> yeah, but, sleep is, the, I say that too, because mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the one moment that we're not in control. Mm -hmm. Everything when we're sleeping is out of our control. If we're fortunate enough to be touched, to wake up, then let's go get it. That's awesome. The, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say success is boring, but whenever you said it, I was like, that, that connects. And even when we were talking back as looking at this week and seeing how it is and just experiencing that gratitude, it's, it, it kind of puts things into perspective when you learn to appreciate what you're doing and you don't over, how did I say, overdo it or like kind of overcorrect where you like overemphasize the good, but you don't look at the work or you, you spoke on hope being yeah. a thought. It's something that you have to keep in the forefront, but it's like, it's not something that you can do. Right. And just having that distinguished 
distinguishing um, ability, it kind of helps having that and mentality again, like we talked about earlier, where it's like one is not better than the other, but it's like this has its function, this has its function. And so long as you know where they're supposed to act, you don't get confused or disappointed too much with, oh, this didn't work out or that didn't work out because it's like, okay, this was a learning experience. So it's like, did I learn the lesson? Did I gain what I was supposed to gain? Or did I get, am I still stuck in the loop kind of going around being like, oh, it's Groundhog's Day again. Yep. And it's like, and yep. again, and, and again. again. So it's like, maybe something's not going the way that it, it's supposed to go. But yep. I like how you just brought that together. And again, it, it, kind of, it speaks really to that reflection. Like you said, being able to look at yourself and really answer some questions where it's like having that honest interrogation. Yeah, yeah, self-actualization, self you know, internal reflection. Uh, but I love what you said, you know, the and, you know, pumpkins and apples is different than pumpkins or apples. And it's definitely different than pumpkins, but apples, you know, it's like two things different and both can be right, you know, and so, uh, you know, it's, are you an and person or a but person? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to have hope and I'm going to work, or I'm going to have hope, but I don't want to work. Those are different. You know, that's why I said hope is not a strategy. You know, hope is a thought. Hope keeps you, hope keeps you happy of what will come. Work will show you what can come, you know, and so, uh yeah are you an and person or a butt person sorry about that oh that's fine you know that's that's the thing that we're out here learning from you know that's the things that we are we're looking to execute day by day mm -hmm. over and over you know, uh, again, internal reflection and self-actualization, the more, the more we are able, uh, to look within and understand who we are, the better we show up mm. to other people, because we, we, we do realize that it's really less about other people and more about ourselves, how we respond to things, mm. how we address things, how we look at things. Cause two people can look at the same thing and see two different, two differences. You know, and a lot of times our we 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 look at our differences as things that are separators compared to looking at differences as uh, appreciative items that can work out and maybe and maybe get two different viewpoints of looking at the same thing. You know, but again, if I'm so worried about my way is the right way and it's the only way and I have a very limited compared to growth mindset, then, you know, I'm going to be coaching you like, hey, this worked for me, now just do it. Just do what I said, you know, only. It's like, no, nah, maybe that's not. But again, if you're going to do, you know, here's the other thing. If you're going to do what I say, do it all. Do all of it. You know, a lot of times we hear the process, we see the process, but we avoid doing what the process calls for. And that's why I say success is boring. You know, being a sports person, you know, if you want to be successful, okay, here's how I became successful. I woke up every morning at 5 a.m. Did I cut out? are we good yeah okay there you are it cut okay, out right, you right when you said at 5 a.m yeah oh so yeah i was like um if you're going to mimic the process mimic right. the whole process so do, if i do everything yeah, do every do everything and that's where that's where people don't 
It's like, oh, I want what you have. I want mm-hmm. your success, but I, I am unwilling to do your blueprint. Mm-hmm. I'm unwilling to do the. I'm unwilling to do the blueprint, and yeah. I'm not going to say your blueprint. I'm right. unwilling to do the principles that you're showing me. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, if you're unwilling to do that, how are you complaining about not being successful? Mm-hmm. So I, I believe this success has principles. There's hardwired um, codes that uh, you we can think we can break them. Mm-hmm. There's no breaking, right. you know, those principles. You know, it's no bring. It's no breaking having a mindset. Yeah, a certain mindset. It's no yeah. breaking having to work. Yeah. Hope again. Hope is not going to come and knock on your door. Right. You know, faith is 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 the thing, believing in the things unseen as if they are. That's yeah. faith. But you have to work faith. Everything requires action. Yeah. You know, but that's a mindset. Yeah. And whenever it comes back to success being boring, it, it just, just every time I hear you say it, it makes me <laughs> appreciate it more because it's like, it also kind of broadens the definition of success because it success is... I like um, this book that I read or I'm, I'm reading now and I keep reading it because of the way it's set up. It's called the greatest salesman in the world. And it has these 10 scrolls where you're supposed to read each one for 30 days, three times a day. And it's like, sometimes you start other times. It's like, okay, did I do it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, right before right. I go to sleep? Right. And then after a while I was like, you know, let me, jump to this third scroll that I need right now in my life talking about persistence and it's just talking about actually in the first scroll talking about everybody has a different definition for success but failure is very simple it's not being able to do the thing that you said you were going to do but sticking with success and speaking in that framework when you look at just doing the work Part of the reason that I like doing this is getting a chance to talk to everyday people. And a lot of times it's like certain people may be more entrepreneurial, like in the circles we run in, but other times I appreciate a lot of the people that I work with that do the nine to five, because a lot of them are successful in raising kids, raising a family, providing for their loved ones, taking care of them. Like you may never see them on billboards, but it's like, they're willing to do the quote unquote mundane, boring job that's not as glamorous, but it's like to be able to get up almost every day of the, the year, go to work, work on some other people may say work on somebody else's vision, but it's like, no, some people, they're willing to work with, with someone, they're willing to work with their hands as well as their mind to be like, okay, I know all I have to do in this job is like put things on the shelves, arrange it in this way, but I know I can bring in the right attitude because the attitude that I bring to work and what I bring home, my children see that. So I might be here working in a construction position, but hey, my kid is going to this top school and they can have access to social media. They can have access to a brand new phone, this, that, and the other. But they're never thinking like, oh, when am I going to be recognized? You might see them on like one picture online through in the background that just happens to be like a family picture. But just right. having that intention in the mindset of just a friend told me the story where his dad, when they were growing up, they were farmers. So they had to take care of the cows. And even during Christmas, they had to go out and take care of the cows. And he's all bothered and just like, well, I want to, I want to stay up um, for Santa. And he's like, well, Santa can wait, but if we don't take care of these cows, they die and they don't know that it's Christmas. So we've got to do this regardless. And it's right. kind of seeing that mindset again and again, it really gives me that appreciation for people to say, regardless of what you're doing and how you succeed or walk in your life, like just having that 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 focus on those principles of like you've got the work 
you've got the care for others, you've got the diligence in what you're doing, whether you're growing pumpkins or oranges, like you just, you know what you're doing or you have an idea of what you want to do and you constantly pursue that bit by bit. I, I appreciate that. And that just kept resounding in the back of my mind whenever you kept talking about success in that way, because it's like, sometimes the social media will have you thinking that it's this thing. And for some people, it may be that, but for other people, it's like, hey, it can be this and this. And right. it's like, one or the other isn't necessarily wrong, but there's breadcrumbs on the road, whichever one you choose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, you got me, you got me excited. I could go into a whole, you know, as I'm listening, it's it's uh principles firing off in my head, mm-hmm. um, you know, and stories, because um, you know, if we think I'm I'll say this real quick, if we think about the recent uh situation in Florida. I believe it was where the tower collapsed, Mm. you know, the apartment building collapsed. Yeah. If we look at, if we look at construction for a building to be successful, there's a lot of boring things that have to happen. That means the truck has to show up every day. And the, the, the concrete truck, that little, that truck that has the the circle going over and over, what is that doing? That's agitating, Mm -hmm. you know, the concrete. So it doesn't uh, clump up. But that truck has to show up every day. Those workers have to get there. They have to pour the concrete. They have to put the bricks up. They have to scale every day. They have to stay safe. Um, What we see as a beautiful structure comes from a lot of boring actions repeated over and over and over again to call it successful. Also, the opposite. You can see something that looks beautiful externally but there was no successful work done internally and so it collapses Mm. you know and so when we think of business it's the same thing we are we we you know the 2020 and 2021 the explosion of entrepreneurs great on one Mm. hand but also the 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 flip side of it happened and that's why harmony and balance is so key Yes, a lot of people turn into entrepreneurs. That's great. But the repercussions of that is that people doing nine to fives were made to feel less than. Well, I just thought about this as you was talking. A lot of entrepreneurs need to be thankful for those nine to five people because those nine to five people are the people that work for entre- with entrepreneurs so entrepreneurs can live their vision that they receive because those nine to five people are willing to invest in your vision, right. you know, or those nine to five people are willing to support you with the entrepreneurial spirit that you came up with. Entrepreneurs are not entrepreneurs without nine to five people mm-hmm. and nine to five people need and want entrepreneurs, not because it's less than, but you can be an entre- everybody's an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You can be an entrepreneur at a nine to five. A lot of, we have a lot of entrepreneurs and the reason why they're not successful is because they wasn't successful in their nine to five. Yeah. They didn't show up on time at their nine to five. They didn't execute their time, didn't have good time management in their nine to five. And now they jump out here in entrepreneurship because it's the sexy word. They wonder why. I would say if you're ready to be an entrepreneur, track your consistent actions at your nine to five. Earn the right to become an entrepreneur. If you can show up every time, every if you can show up consistently to your normal job that you have now, if you can complete all the tasks that you have, all the opportunities, whichever way you want to say the word. And then I just heard Dr. Eric Thomas say this. If someone can give you work and you can be responsible for it, meaning when I give you something to work on, I don't have to come behind you and do more work. He said a statement, some of us are doing work and we leave more work after we're done working, which shouldn't be the case. Be responsible for what you do. So if you're working at a nine to five, when they give you something to do, let your name stand on it. I used to have a thing that if I put my name on it, you don't have to worry about it. You know, and yeah. hearing Dr. Eric Thomas say that's basically saying I'm responsible. You may come and look and just do an overview, 
but work to the point that your name carries weight that, Hey, if Kurt referred this person to me, he connected me with this person. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that the connections are going to always be perfect, but it means if he's referred me to you, there's some, I know it's some quality there. Right. So let's, we can have a consultation, you know, right. that, Hey, right. if Kurt's putting his name on it, uh, he's responsible. And so that's where we, we want to be. We want to be able to, people see our names on things and they're like, yo, I know it's good quality. I know, I know it's done well. Yeah. What's amazing about that is that it, it reminds me of this. Um, I've been going through a series of books and speaking to that entrepreneurial mindset. I know something I, I found myself getting caught up in is you see as the year is coming to an end, you see different people, they're getting ready for promotions, they're doing groups and things like that. And one thing I told myself I would do in this podcast journey is just be consistent this year from start to finish, putting out one episode a week, whether it's pre-recorded and it comes out months, months later. But the important thing is to put that out and to stay focused enough on doing that and not being like, oh, okay, like, I did this back then, but now it would be more attractive to put something that's like hot, but it's like, no, it's not about putting out what's hot. And one of the books I started going through for myself because someone had asked me to um, consider teaching a group of young men. And for me, initially, that's always been a nickname of mine, teacher growing up. And I was right. like, I never thought I was a teacher, but kind of being in that position, I'm like, man, that's, that's a lot of responsibility. That's some weight where it's, it's like, you're responsible for these people. So like what you impart on them, that, that information matters. And like you said, if you're going to refer somebody, your words, um, the book is called the four agreements. And the first agreement is that be impeccable with your word. So if you know, you're going to put your name on something when you're working you're going to say hey this is the person for this you don't want to sin against yourself to go against yourself to be like okay i'm going to give you just some run-of-the-mill person and then the next time you might be like yeah i don't know if i trust you anymore because the last recommendation you gave me was like this but that just made me think of that where it's like be be intentional not only in your work but in what you say to where it it makes you just think twice for a minute but a big thing that's talked about is being authentic it's like be the best version of yourself but in doing that like be as honest as you can be because if you're spending too much time trying to please trying to look good like you might fabricate something back to the building it looks good on the outside but if there's nothing boring, nothing, um, I guess that's another construction term, boring in the sense of like uh, what they're doing out in Cali, but the digging underground, making sure that everything is shored up, making sure that there's, uh, there you are. I think my internet cut out for a second. We're back. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. I stayed. See, I did the boring thing. I stayed. I stayed. <laughs> I appreciate that. But no problem. Yeah. All, all I was saying is just um, a lot of times in, in what we say and what we do, to your point, if if you don't have that, the consistency and kind of the the foundation that you build as to whatever you're doing, you have the, the collapse at the end of the day when you might be in the headlines and they're just like, well, I, I thought they were so and so and it's like that's what they told us but in the background when the cameras weren't on in the dark they were being someone else they were being something else cutting corners you know that's why they call it makeup a lot yeah. of us have beautiful makeup but we haven't we aren't made up you know what i'm saying so yeah you you see externally it's like oh beautiful beautiful gorgeous mm. inside it's totally different yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pumpkins and apples. <laughs> Pumpkins and apples. <laughs> well, um, I know, I know, I set this thing up for thirty minutes, but I, I don't want to cut it too short because I, I want you to be able to share what you have 
coming up in 2022 and mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to just put out there and into the, the world? So listen, um, first of all, again, thank you for this opportunity. I, I truly do not take for granted whenever someone invites you on their platform. It's like, you know, being from the South is almost like grandmama inviting you into her house. You know, she don't invite everybody, you know, as grandmama would say, I don't invite everybody in my house, baby. You know, so thank you for that. But really uh, coming up in 2021, finishing up the fourth quarter um, with, you know, uh, consultations, coaching. Um, and, and what I say makes me different is I really, I really focus on listening and being silent. You know, when you listen, you have to be silent. They're the same word if you just flip the letters around. Um, but I, I really work to pay attention to what works for you and ask what works for you and give you direction uh, for your life. And a lot of people have said, you know, Kurt, you give so much. And it's like, yeah, I over promise and I over deliver, you know, because I never know if we have a second time. So I want to give you my very best that time. And if you, you know, if you take that and you execute, I like to say I have a 98% success rate. If you take and execute and you stay uh, uh, successful in the boring, you will win when it's time for the lights to come on. But what you do outside the limelight is what allows you to shine when the lights come on. So, you know, I have coaching and, and consulting Um you know, available, uh, have my link, you know, you can schedule a, a call with me and we'll sit down and figure out a roadmap. And then in 2022, you know, it's going to be more community building. Uh, I'm going to put myself under the pressure of really working to show how to, how to build, foster, educate, and nurture a community. You know, that's one of my superpowers that I figured out is that, you know, I'm a, I'm a flight attendant. So one mm -hmm. of the big things is about the people and experience. Yeah. And we've seen an explosion of communities, but a lot of people uh, lack truly understanding how to nurture and foster once you have all the people in a room, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't have to be the person that, that does it all, mm -hmm. but you have to be smart enough to find a person that can do it for you. You know, right. you got to have the vision. You have to have where we're going. You know, that's why it's important to have that self actualization Like, hey, I'm the person that's supposed to go out and find new land, but I need to find the person that can come out and take care of the land. And there's no disrespect in either one because mm -hmm. we can do it and we will do it compared to I can do it, but you will do it. Again, that and and but, those two yeah. different things, you know? So it's and, you know, I will be the person because there are people, mm -hmm. you know, to wrap it up. There are people that are supposed to go out and see the next place. Right, right. They need freedom to go find that next, yeah. you know, to stay, to keep us uncomfortable. But the only way they do that is that they have to have people responsible for making sure, as you said, hey, it's Christmas, but if our cows get out, if our, you know, something happens in the barn, something happens, hey, it may be Christmas, but we got to be responsible to be able to go out there and take care of that. You have to have people that are responsible to be able to nurture your community and, and take care of your community when you're going to get the next thing for the community. But a lot of times you see people, they get people into communities mm -hmm. and then the community just becomes stale and stagnant like a, 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 like a lake you know, that doesn't have water flowing in and out, you know, it becomes a cesspool because you don't have life in it. You got to put life in your community. And I, I you know, as I'm saying it now, I want to teach people how to keep life and, and life giving waters in and oxygen in their community, you know, so that's coming in 2022. I got a little program coming up uh, in 2020, 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, I hope people rock with, but if they don't, I still celebrate for you. I still wish yeah. you well, you know, just get a part of a community. You yeah. know, I'm part of a dope community, uh, a couple of them. And right now we got the squad 718-400-7061 hashtag the squad text that come join our community. We got a big things coming up in our community. So, you know, Hey, I'm not saying that 
we're the best. I like to say we just do it in a very great way. That's work for us. You know, we're boring over there, but we see a lot of success. <laughs> awesome. I and thank you again. It. I appreciate this. This yes, is sir. amazing. And, uh, you know, it's my time podcast. Please go share this. You know, even if you don't have to share this episode, share it's my time podcast because you never know who needs the word that Asher is dropping. So, Asher, thank you. Uh, appreciate you so much. And, um, you know, I'm honored to, uh, you know, think about pumpkins and apples now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I'm going to hit the, the stop. I, I got a surprise for you. Okay. <laughs>